Ready to dive into some seriously strange stuff. Tonight, we're heading to Lubbock, Texas. It's 1951, UFOs are all the rage, and something weird is happening in the skies above this sleepy town. And what makes Lubbock different from your run-of-the-mill UFO sightings? It's the witnesses. We're talking respected scientists from Texas Tech, not just folks spinning yarns about little green men. You're right. These were credible observers, and their stories were chilling, to say the least. Imagine this. Multiple witnesses over several weeks describing a V-shaped formation of lights just cruising silently across the night sky. Some even mentioned an eerie blue-green glow. It's that consistency, the recurring pattern observed by different people, that elevates Lubbock from a simple sighting to a full-blown mystery. And get this, some witnesses even said it seemed like these lights were moving in formation, like they were coordinating. Spooky. Right. Now picture yourself as Carl Hart Jr., a freshman at Texas Tech, caught up in all the excitement. He's out there with everyone else, staring up at the sky. And what does he have? His trusty Kodak camera. And snap. He takes what becomes the iconic Lubbock Lights photo, a grainy black and white image that still has researchers scratching their heads. That photo is fascinating. It captures the mystery perfectly, especially since some folks swore they saw a solid object behind those lights, a real craft, while others only saw those strange lights. So we've got these unexplained lights, credible witnesses, mm -hmm. and then the government gets involved, right? And this is where things get really weird. At first, the Air Force tries to brush it off as just light refraction, like a mirage in the sky. A little yeah. too easy, don't you think? Yeah, a little convenient, especially when you consider that they quickly changed their tune. Remember Project Blue Book? That was the government's official UFO investigation team, and they swooped in to investigate the Lubbock Lights. Right, Project Blue Book. You'd think they'd clear everything up. But their investigation, it only seemed to deepen the mystery leaving a lot of unanswered questions. It definitely added fuel to the conspiracy theories. And speaking of conspiracies, it gets even wilder when you factor in those declassified documents that surfaced years later. Oh yeah, those documents. They hinted at something really strange, a deep military interest in those Lubbock lights, like something straight out of the X-Files. What do you make of that? Well, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? I mean, what if those lights weren't alien, but something even more mind-blowing, something top secret, so advanced, it looked like magic to everyone who saw it? Top secret tech, huh? That's a thought. So where do we even begin trying to explain something like that? Well, we could start with the usual suspects, like ball lightning, you know, that rare phenomenon where you get this glowing ball of energy. Yeah, I've heard of it. Sounds kind of spooky. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't that explain the Lubbock lights? I mean, lights in the sky, right? Yeah, not so fast. Ball lightning is usually connected to thunderstorms, and there weren't any storms during those Lubbock sightings. And those lights, they were moving in formation, right? And ball lightning doesn't really do that. Okay, that makes sense. Hmm. So what about something simpler? I mean, couldn't those lights have been reflections off, like birds or planes? Oh, investigators definitely considered all that. But think about it, the way those lights were moving, how high up they were, and for weeks, not just one night. Those details don't really line up with reflections, even from birds or planes. True. It's like none of the obvious answers really fit, right? So what are we left with? Honestly, it's possible that we're dealing with something we don't fully understand yet. Maybe there are things out there, real events, that our science just hasn't caught up with. Okay, now that's fascinating. So we have this unexplained event, government secrecy, possible advanced technology. But the Lubbock lights, they didn't just stay in Texas, did they? No, they took on a life of their own. That photo Carl Hart Jr. took, it's practically an icon now. You see it everywhere, books, documentaries. It's like it came to represent the whole idea of, are we alone? Why? Yeah, something like that. And it wasn't just the image itself. Those themes of eerie lights moving silently, that V-shape, that stuff pops up in other UFO sightings too, you know? Wait a minute. You're saying there might be a connection between the Lubbock lights and other famous UFO cases? Now we're talking. You got it. Hmm. Think about the Phoenix lights back in 97. Thousands saw those lights. Some even described a V-shape moving silently. And don't forget the Belgium wave from the late 80s. Again, triangular formations of lights moving in ways we don't usually see. So maybe this isn't just a bunch of isolated incidents, but like a pattern. Like something bigger is happening all over the world. A global pattern. Now that's a thought. So are we saying there's actually a link between all these events? Or is it just a crazy coincidence? It's definitely a question worth considering. I mean, when you step back and look at the big picture, you do see some pretty interesting similarities, right? The V formation thing, the silent movement, even that strange glow people reported. And it's happening across different continents, different decades. 
Makes you wonder if it's more than just misidentified planes or weather balloons, doesn't it? Yeah, it really makes you think. So where does that leave us with the Lubbock Lights? We've gone over the eyewitness accounts, the government's response, the science, and now even these possible links to other UFO events. What are we supposed to believe? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And the truth is there's no easy answer. We can examine the evidence all day long, go over every detail, consider all the possibilities. But at the end of the day, it comes down to you. You mean what we choose to believe. Exactly. It's about looking at everything and then deciding what makes sense to you, what feels right based on what you know. So we're left with a mystery. But in a way, isn't that kind of exciting? I mean, it keeps those possibilities alive, that sense of wonder about the unknown. I think so. It's a good reminder that we don't have all the answers. The universe is a vast and mysterious place, and there are things out there, forces and technologies, that we might not even be able to comprehend yet. Maybe those lights in the sky over Lubbock were something truly extraordinary. Or maybe, just maybe, someday we'll find a simple explanation that we just haven't thought of yet. Either way, it makes you look up at the night sky a little differently. You know? Absolutely. It reminds us that there's still so much out there to discover and that the pursuit of knowledge and understanding should never end. And that's what makes these deep dives so fascinating, right? It's not about being a believer or a skeptic. It's about engaging with the mystery, the evidence. It's about asking the big questions and enjoying the journey as we search for answers. And hey, who knows? Maybe someday the Lubbock Lights will be just another solved mystery in the books. But for now... It remains one of the most compelling UFO cases out there, a testament to the enduring power of the unknown. Well said. The universe is full of surprises, and sometimes the best we can do is appreciate the mystery and keep searching for answers.